This is the VOA Special English Health Report. Loneliness has been linked to depression and other health problems. Now, a study says it can also spread. A friend of a lonely person was 52% more likely to develop feelings of loneliness. And a friend of that friend was 25% more likely to do the same. Earlier findings showed that happiness, obesity, and the ability to stop smoking can also spread, like infections, within social groups. The findings all come from a major health study in the American town of Framingham, Massachusetts. The study began in 1948 to investigate the causes of heart disease. Since then, more tests have been added, including measures of loneliness and depression. The new findings involved more than 5,000 people in the second generation of the Framingham Heart Study. The researchers examined friendship histories and reports of loneliness. The results established a pattern that spread as people reported fewer close friends. For example, loneliness can affect relationships between next door neighbors. The loneliness spreads as neighbors who were close friends now spend less time together. The study also found that loneliness spreads more easily among women than men. Researchers from the University of Chicago, Harvard, and the University of California, San Diego did the study. The findings appeared in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. The average person is said to experience feelings of loneliness about 48 days a year. The study found that having a lonely friend can add about 17 days. But every additional friend can decrease loneliness by about 5%, or two and a half days. Lonely people become less and less trusting of others. This makes it more and more difficult for them to make friends, and more likely that society will reject them. John Cacioppo at the University of Chicago led the study. He says it is important to recognize and deal with loneliness. He says people who have been pushed to the edges of society should receive help to repair their social networks. The aim should be to aggressively create what he calls a protective barrier against loneliness. This barrier, he says, can keep the whole network from coming apart. And that's the VOA Special English Health Report. You can find transcripts and MP3s of all of our reports at voaspecialenglish.com. You can also post your comments and read what others are saying. And you can find us on YouTube and Twitter at VOA learning English. This is the VOA Special English Health Report. Today we take another look at teaching young people how to build healthy relationships. Last week we told you 15 percent of seventh graders said they had experienced physical violence in a relationship with the opposite sex. Seventh graders are about 12 years old. Concerns about dating abuse at such a young age are leading to new programs to teach 11 to 14 year olds about healthy relationships. The northwestern state of Idaho has had a program for the last few years called Start Strong Idaho. Director Kelly Miller says healthy relationships depend on open honest communication 
And that starts with communication between children and parents. Ms. Miller advises parents to talk with their children anytime they can. Parent-child communication can reduce the risk of abusive relationships. 75% of students in the study said they talked to their parents about the issue of dating violence. A good time to have a conversation about a difficult issue is during a family meal or after watching a movie or television show together. Kelly Miller says young people need rules and boundaries. They also need the skills to be able to resist pressure to be on the phone all the time or to text when they should be sleeping. The Start Strong Idaho website offers some advice. For instance, watch out for these signs that a phone could be part of an abusive relationship. Feeling like you have to answer text messages or calls right away. Feeling like the texts you receive have gone from caring to controlling. Being pressured to constantly be on your phone even when you are with friends. And being pressured to send sexual texts or pictures. Kelly Miller also tells young people not to write anything on Facebook that they would not want their parents or other family members to see. And she reminds them that there is no need to accept friend requests from strangers or to give your phone number to someone you do not know. Start Strong Idaho holds separate workshops for parents and teens and also brings the two groups together. Kelly Miller says during these meetings, families often learn things they never knew about each other. Ms. Miller said, one mom came up and said, I'm so thankful there was this workshop tonight because I found out my son not only was dating but currently has two girlfriends at the same time and didn't understand the problem with that. And that's the VOA Special English Health Report. I'm Carolyn Prasuti. This is the VOA Special English Health Report. Rural areas of India may have few doctors or other health resources. Instead, many people use traditional healers. These faith-based healers, or witch doctors, sometimes have strange theories about how the body works. In West Bengal, for example, some people have long believed that getting bitten by a dog leads to the birth of puppies. Dr. Kumar Kante Ghosh is a psychiatrist. He helped document this belief in so-called puppy pregnancy syndrome for an article. It appeared in the Lancet Medical Journal in 2003. His interest started when a nine-year-old boy came to his health clinic about 10 days after being bitten by a dog. The boy believed that he was pregnant with a puppy and the boy's parents said he was starting to sound like a dog. A healer named Buddhaswar Singh says his mixture of yogurt and herbs has cured many people. If the man is brought to me on time I can give him my medicine and he will be all right. Sanjay Samui is a medical doctor who wishes people would stop believing ideas like this. They are uneducated village people. They still hold on to such superstitions, he says. He tells everyone that in no situation 
can a puppy be born inside a human body? The national government spends about one and a half percent of India's gross domestic product on health care. This is among the lowest rates in the world. It means faith healers are the only choice in some places. The healers spread medical myths and even build distrust against doctors. But in some countries, doctors may seek help from traditional healers. Officials in Russia have counted at least 800,000 alternative healers, more than the number of medical doctors. Daria Minerova, a healer in Moscow, told a reporter that doctors often called on her to either cast spells or clear spells for patients. She said they ask her for help when they have a difficult case in trying to cure a patient. Healthcare in Russia is basically free, so cost does not explain why people seek alternative healers. Marina Belosova is an English teacher in Moscow. She told a reporter that people avoid Western medical care in Russia for a different reason. Such care is generally of poor quality. She said many people turn to alternative medicine because they believe that nothing really bad will happen. For VOA Special English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. This is the VOA Special English Health Report. People who stop smoking often replace cigarettes with food. A new study says the weight they gain may increase their diabetes risk in the short term. Type 2 diabetes is common in people who eat too much and exercise too little and those with a family history of it. Smoking is another risk factor. But quitting smoking may carry a temporary risk. The study found that smokers who quit had a 70% increased risk of developing diabetes in the first six years. That was compared to those who had never smoked. The risks were highest in the first three years. And the risk returned to normal after 10 years of not smoking. The researchers say weight gain is probably to blame for the increase. But they say smokers should stop anyway. And the real message is not to even start. Type 2 diabetes interferes with the body's use of insulin. The substance produced by the pancreas normally lowers blood sugar during and after eating. Over time, high blood sugar can lead to blindness, kidney failure, heart disease, and nerve damage. The study is from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. It appears in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Another American study says obesity has become as great a threat to quality of life as smoking. It compared losses in what are called quality-adjusted life years. The study found that losses from obesity are now equal to, if not greater than, those from smoking. These days, there are fewer smokers in the country, but more people who are extremely overweight. The findings are based on questions about health-related quality of life in government telephone surveys. The study is from Columbia University and the City College of New York. It appears in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine. And another study has linked each hour of watching television daily 
to an 18% increased risk of death from heart disease. The study of adults in Australia also found an increased risk of death from other causes. The findings are published in Circulation, Journal of the American Heart Association. Lead author David Dunstan at the Baker IDI Heart and Diabetes Institute in Victoria says the body was designed to move. He says even if people have a healthy body weight, sitting for long periods of time still has an unhealthy influence on blood sugar and blood fats. And that's the VOA Special English Health Report. This is the VOA Special English Health Report. Hospitals not only treat infections, they can also cause them. In the United States alone, the number of infections in hospitals is estimated at close to 2 million each year. About 100,000 patients die. A new government report notes that very little progress has been made in reducing what are called health care associated infections. The most common are infections of the urinary tract, surgical site, and bloodstream. Many infections have been increasing even as hospitals have made efforts to improve. The report showed, for example, an 8% increase in cases of sepsis, or bloodstream infection, following operations. About 40% of all healthcare associated infections are linked to the use of catheters. A tube is placed inside the body to collect urine so the patient does not have to get out of bed. But the latest report says urinary tract infections after surgery increased more than three and a half percent. It says catheters should be used only if necessary. Another way to prevent infections is to give patients antibiotics before surgery. Doctors are advised to give them within the hour before the operation. Patients who get antibiotics earlier than one hour are more likely to get an infected surgical wound. Also, doctors are advised to discontinue the antibiotics within 24 hours after the surgery. The report says longer than that is usually not necessary. It can increase the risk of antibiotic resistance and serious kinds of diarrhea. Not all the news was bad. The report said the rate of pneumonia in adults after surgery decreased more than 11.5%. A separate report looked at the differences last year in health care for different groups in society. Kathleen Sibelius is Secretary of Health and Human Services. Her department produced the 2009 National Healthcare Disparities Report and National Healthcare Quality Report. She noted that racial and ethnic minorities were less likely to have insurance and less likely to get the treatments they needed. She called the numbers troubling. But she also said the health care reforms passed by Congress will improve the quality of care for all Americans. She said the new law will reward quality over quantity of care, creating a system that prevents diseases before more costly treatment is required. And that's the VOA Special English Health Report.
This is the VOA Special English Health Report. We recently told you about a study which found that more than 10% of all babies worldwide are born too early. A common problem in preterm babies is respiratory disease. The lungs are the last organs to develop. But a medicine called surfactant can save babies struggling to breathe. The story of this life-saving medicine begins with a discovery in 1959 by a researcher named Mary Ellen Avery. She told this story in 2005 to Children's News at Children's Hospital Boston where she was the first woman to serve as physician-in-chief. She had been doing research at the Harvard School of Public Health. She was asked to find out more about the foam that forms in the lungs of people with a condition called pulmonary edema. At night she worked in a hospital delivery room. She saw many premature babies with a disease now called respiratory distress syndrome. She examined the lungs of babies who had died. She found there was no air in their lungs and she discovered why. In her words, the material that was important, the foam, was missing and they were struggling to reinflate their lungs. Nature put this foam, or surfactant, in the lungs to lower surface tension. You cannot keep air spaces inflated without it. Babies usually develop this coating while they are in the womb, but many premature babies do not. Finally, in 1980, a Japanese doctor, Tetsuro Fujiwara, published a study about an artificial surfactant. It could be given to a baby and within minutes the baby could breathe. The medical community had taken years to accept Dr. Avery's discovery. But she told Harvard Medical School in 1982 that she never gave up. In her words, Knowing what you want to do is important, especially in research. Dr. Ann Hansen at Children's Hospital Boston remembers the first time she heard about Dr. Avery. It was in 1990, when the government was in the process of approving a surfactant called Exosurf. The doctor she was working with had some exciting news for her. She said it was the last night before the hospital would start giving Exosurf to all its preterm babies. And then he told her the story of Mary Ellen Avery. Dr. Avery was 84 years old when she died late last year. For VOA Special English, I'm Mario Ritter. ...of death from other causes. The findings are published in Circulation. Journal of the American Heart Association. Lead author David Dunstan at the Baker IDI Heart and Diabetes Institute in Victoria says the body was designed to move. He says even if people have a healthy body weight, sitting for long periods of time still has an unhealthy influence on blood sugar and blood fats. And that's the VOA Special English Health Report. 
This is the VOA Special English Health Report. Hospitals not only treat infections, they can also cause them. In the United States alone, the number of infections in hospitals is estimated at close to 2 million each year. About 100,000 patients die. A new government report notes that very little progress has been made in reducing what are called health care associated infections. The most common are infections of the urinary tract, surgical site, and bloodstream. There are fewer smokers in the country, but more people who are extremely overweight. The findings are based on questions about health-related quality of life in government telephone surveys. The study is from Columbia University and the City College of New York. It appears in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine. And another study has linked each hour of watching television daily to an 18 percent increased risk of death from heart disease. The study of adults in Australia also found an increased risk of death from other causes. The findings are published in Circulation, Journal of the American Heart Association. Lead author David Dunstan at the Baker IDI Heart and Diabetes Institute in Victoria says the body was designed to move. He says even if people have a healthy body weight, sitting for long periods of time still has an unhealthy influence on blood sugar and blood fats. And that's the view. Talk to their parents about the issue of dating violence. A good time to have a conversation about a difficult issue is during a family meal or after watching a movie or television show together. Kelly Miller says young people need rules and boundaries. They also need the skills to be able to resist pressure to be on the phone all the time or to text when they should be sleeping. The Start Strong Idaho website offers some advice. For instance, watch out for these signs that a phone could be part of an abusive relationship. Feeling like you have to answer text messages or calls right away. Feeling like the texts you receive have gone from caring to controlling. Being pressured to constantly be on your phone even when you are with friends and being pressured to send sexual texts or pictures. Kelly Miller also tells young people not to write anything on Facebook that they would not want their parents or other family members to see. And she reminds them. For VOA Special English, I'm Carolyn Prasuti. This is the VOA Special English Health Report. People who stop smoking often replace cigarettes with food. A new study says the weight they gain may increase their diabetes risk in the short term. Type 2 diabetes is common in people who eat too much and exercise too little and those with a family history of it. Smoking is another risk factor. But quitting smoking may carry a temporary risk. The study found that smokers who quit had a 70% increased risk of developing diabetes in the first six years. That was compared to those who had never smoked. The risks were highest in the first three years and the risk returned to normal after 10 years of not smoking. The researchers say weight gain is probably to blame for the increase.
but they say smokers should stop anyway. And the real message is not to even start. Type 2 diabetes interferes with the body's use of insulin. Can save babies struggling to breathe. The story of this life-saving medicine begins with a discovery in 1959 by a researcher named Mary Ellen Avery. She told this story in 2005 to Children's News at Children's Hospital Boston where she was the first woman to serve as physician-in-chief. She had been doing research at the Harvard School of Public Health. She was asked to find out more about the foam that forms in the lungs of people with a condition called pulmonary edema. At night she worked in a hospital delivery room. She saw many premature babies with a disease now called respiratory distress syndrome. She examined the lungs of babies who had died. She found there was no air in their lungs and she discovered why. In her words, the material that was important, the foam, was missing and they were struggling to reinflate their lungs. Nature put this foam heart disease. Since then, more tests have been added, including measures of loneliness and depression. The new findings involved more than 5,000 people in the second generation of the Framingham Heart Study. The researchers examined friendship histories and reports of loneliness. The results established a pattern that spread as people reported fewer close friends. For example, loneliness can affect relationships between next door neighbors. The loneliness spreads as neighbors who were close friends now spend less time together. The study also found that loneliness spreads more easily among women than men. Researchers from the University of Chicago, Harvard, and the University of California, San Diego did the study. The findings appeared in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. The average person is said to experience feelings of loneliness about 48 days a year. The study found that having a lonely friend at night, she worked in a hospital delivery room. She saw many premature babies with a disease now called respiratory distress syndrome. She examined the lungs of babies who had died. She found there was no air in their lungs, and she discovered why. In her words, the material that was important the foam was missing, and they were struggling to reinflate their lungs. Nature put this foam or surfactant in the lungs to lower surface tension. You cannot keep air spaces inflated without it. Babies usually develop this coating while they are in the womb but many premature babies do not. Finally, in 1980, a Japanese doctor, Tetsuro Fujiwara, published a study about an artificial surfactant. It could be given to a baby and within minutes, the baby could breathe. The medical community had taken years to accept Dr. Avery's discovery but she